I'm going to list some bad guys, and you just <laughs> confirm whether or not they're in the game. Okay. Doc Ock. Hell no. Venom. Hell no. Fragile Eagle. Oh yeah. Even though we pretty much know where the sequel is going at this point, it's still awesome to get some teases about what it could feature. Anyways, welcome back, true believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another really exciting Spider-Man PS4 related video. And in this video, we are going to go over some very interesting teases that Brian Antar did hint at at a recent gaming convention relating to the inevitable sequel to Spider-Man PS4. So in case you aren't aware, there is this recent gaming convention going on called the Dice Summit, also known as the Design, Innovate, Communicate, and Entertain Summit that a majority of game developers Go to each year. And for this year specifically, Spider-Man PS4 is up for a multitude of awards relating to separate gaming categories, and Insomniac have attended the DICE Summit to talk about the game. And alongside Spider-Man PS4, Insomniac have also attended this year's DICE Summit to also talk about what it takes to be a creative director in video games, as well as discuss what they could do within their future gaming titles. And while there is the huge possibility that Insomniac are going to work on other games besides Spider-Man PS4 sequel, I do think given how well it sold within 2018, as as well as how many PlayStation 4 system it did sell in general, I do think a demand for a sequel is extremely high and most likely already in development. And given what Brian Intar says during this interview between himself and Insomniac Games' CEO Ted Price, it definitely leads to what they could potentially be doing within Spider-Man PS4 sequel. Primarily relating to this first question that Ted Price asks Brian Intar regarding what he thinks could be improved as they continue to develop games in the near future. And while answering Ted's question, Brian did give some really interesting answers regarding to the development of Spider-Man PS4 in general and how he thinks it can be improved in the future games that they do make. Starting with the first factor that Brian discussed about is indeed the game's story. So while Brian and the rest of Insomniac thoroughly enjoyed the story that they did create for Spider-Man PS4, a huge key factor that Brian did talk about is having a simple story with complex characters. Not only did Brian say that this was a very valuable lesson that he learned from the head writer of Spider-Man PS4, John Paquette, but he does think that this will indeed grasp more players with having a story with these attributes. And while I did personally thoroughly enjoy Spider-Man PS4's narrative, I definitely see what Brian is talking about. It'd be really hard to try and summarize Spider-Man PS4's story within one sentence, so instead, Brian says that it would be simpler if he were to write it out in a whole paragraph. Mainly because in the main story of Spider-Man PS4, we had all these great connections between Peter Parker, Mary Jane, Aunt May, and Miles Morales while Spider-Man was doing stuff relating to Otto Octavius, Martin Lee, and all the rest of the Sinister Six. Not to mention the storyline involving Norman Osborn and the Devil's Breath form as well as what was happening with Harry Osborn in the background. And even though the reason Marvel and Insomniac decided to do this within the main game of Spider-Man PS4 was to fully flesh out this game's background and universe, I do think by the time the sequel will release, it will have a much more concise story with a very simple plot to go along with it. Although, now that we do have a proper grasp on this game's universe and background, as well as the characters that are featured within it, I do think that they will expand upon them even more by the time the sequel releases. Especially since we are most likely going to receive Harry Osborn turning into to Venom, as well as Miles Morales becoming Spider-Man, Yuri Watanabe as the Wraith, and possibly introducing Gwen Stacy. And since these are just a few of the multitude of storylines that Insomniac will implement within the sequel, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next game. As for the second point that Brian brought up during this interview is that him and the rest of Insomniac obviously want to continue to refine all the gameplay mechanics that they do put within each new game. And mainly for Spider-Man's case, this would most likely mean to refine the gameplay mechanics revolving around the game's traversal system, as as well as the game's combat, animations, and much more. And this is obviously normal standards for every developer within the gaming industry that wants to fully continue to upgrade and continue to polish their games in the near future. And seeing what great gameplay mechanics we receive within Spider-Man PS4 alone, I have no doubt that Insomniac will continue to innovate and refine these gameplay mechanics by the time the sequel comes out. As for me, some of the main hopes that I have for the game's sequel is to fully double down on the game's traversal system by having even more fleshed out parkour, as well as even more air tricks when swinging. I already thoroughly enjoy the game's combat system as is, but I do think the traversal could have been upgraded in a few areas, so I really hope that Insomniac can do that by the time the next game is in fact out. And moving on within this interview, Brian does bring up some very interesting points relating to specific gameplay aspects that were featured within Spider-Man PS4, as well as what it takes for the player to feel interactive within that game's world. Specifically as the game's creative director, Brian was saying he wanted to have the player feel as connected to the game and the character that they are playing as as much as 
possible. And if they were able to achieve that amount of deep connection between the player and the game, as well as the character that they are playing as, it would have a huge impact on the game's progression system, as well as customization and mission design. Now, out of all those points that Brian did bring up, I do think customization is the most important one out of the bunch. But in Spider-Man PS4's case, we did have a small amount of customization in the first game, mainly relating to whichever suit you want to wear and equip a specific suit power tailored to any suit you want to choose at that time. So for example, I could choose to wear the advanced suit in the game, but if I want to, I could use the Spider-Punk suit power of the Spider Guitar and equip it with that suit. Plus, there was the addition of equipping suit mods to your specific Spider-Man in order to make him more offensive or defensive than the standard character. So yes, to a certain degree, you could say that there is indeed customization in Spider-Man PS4, but hopefully what Brian means by this is that they are going to expand it by the time the next game releases. And what I mean, of course, is fully customizable suits that you can have within Spider-Man PS4's sequel. Now, this feature in particular is one that I believe Insomniac could go fully in-depth with since they did have a feature like that within Sunset Overdrive where you could fully customize your female or male character look however you want to. But mainly in Spider-Man's case, you could possibly customize how Peter Parker looks like when you do play as him in the sequel, which would be cool, but mainly this does relate to customizing your own unique Spider-Man suit. And again, since you could make your character look and feel however you want to within Sunset Overdrive, I have no doubt that Insomniac could do the same thing within Spider-Man PS4, but going even more in-depth with it by making very interesting customizable Spider-Man outfits. This could range from choosing your own Spider-Man colors, logo design, eye lenses, web patterning, and etc. And if they were able to do something like that in the sequel, I have no doubt that would be one of the biggest highlights of the game in general. And as we draw closer to the end of this interview, we do get a really interesting question from Ted Price to Brian Intar by saying what types of challenges he wants to tackle in the future of making games. And with the initial statement that Brian gives, he does want to try and expand the tone of the game's story as well as the game's world overall. So in Spider-Man PS4's case, the game did have a very mature tone while also having some very lighthearted moments within it as well. As for the game's world, New York City felt extremely fleshed out since all the citizens were alive within the city and also having very exciting landmarks to go and explore, as well as awesome areas that you could look into during the DLC and other missions of the game. This not only made it feel like everything in the game had a purpose, but it also made the city feel like its own unique character. And knowing by the time the sequel comes out, we'll have an even bigger New York to go and explore, I can't wait to see what type of additions Insomniac will add to the overall world of Spider-Man PS4's universe. And as for the last statement that Brian makes during this interview is that he does want to try and tackle very interesting and also serious story subjects that not a lot of other games really go into. And interestingly enough, the main example Brian uses for this factor is actually religion. Now in this case, even though Spider-Man may not be that big of a religious character, wait a minute. I want you to kill Peter Parker. But in all seriousness, the comics have dabbled a little bit with Spider-Man's religion, specifically how Peter deals with drama and specifically death relating to his daily life. And while religion may be a very interesting factor to look into for a story point in the sequel, I do think the main factor that they are going to look into is possibly death, illness, and mainly disease. And if you're wondering why that is, that mainly relates to the one and only Harry Osborn. Since we now know that the Devil's Breath formula was supposed to be a cure for Harry Osborn and Emily Osborn's disease, I do think that they will expand on that aspect in the sequel when Harry does end up becoming Venom. So knowing that Peter may have to end up fighting his best friend who is on the brink of death who may turn into a giant symbiotic monster will be a very touching and heartfelt storyline to go into. Plus it would also be a huge nod in reference to the Ultimate Comics if the whole purpose of the symbiote is to try and cure certain diseases. But still, we'll just have to wait and see as to how Insomniac actually handled the symbiote storyline in Spider-Man PS4's sequel. And as for the sequel itself, this statement from one of the big heads at Sony and PlayStation definitely solidifies the fact that it may just end up being a title for the PlayStation 5. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is this recent article that relates to Sean Layden, who is one of the big heads at Sony, saying Sony Sean Layden wants fewer and bigger PlayStation games. Video game makers are struggling to adapt to the internet era. With the PS5 on the horizon, Sony's video game boss has a plan. So this entire article is extremely huge and in-depth relating to the overall platform of PlayStation in general, so if you do want to read the entirety of it, I will leave it in the description below. But as 
As for the biggest highlights of the article itself, there is a really interesting section where Sean does go in detail as to why Sony is not attending E3 this year. And even more so, Sean also states that they are trying to make even bigger and better games on the future Sony platforms. So as the interviewer asks in the article, he says, you're not the first big company to bow out of the big E3 video game show in June, but I'm curious why you chose this year to drop out. And to go over the most important points as to what Sean states, he does say, with our decision to do fewer, bigger games over longer periods of time, we got to a point where June of 2019 was not a time for us to have a new thing to say. And we feel like if we ring the bell and people show up here in force, people have expectation, oh, they're going to tell us something. We are progressing the conversation about how do we transform E3 to be more relevant? Can E3 transition more into a fan festival of gaming, where we don't gather there to drop the new bomb? Can it just be a celebration of games and have panels where we bring game developers closer to fans? So it definitely seems like Sean's statement is saying that they want to connect with the gamers more on a personal level. And with one way as to how they can do that the most efficiently is by making even more high quality exclusives just like the PS4 had on the future platform of the PS5. Although, the one downside of having even bigger and better PlayStation exclusives on the future platform is the long wait that we have to endure when waiting for them. So if we do end up waiting a really long time for the sequel of Spider-Man PS4 to possibly be on the PS5, I do think the wait will definitely be worth it given how much talent and passion Insomniac have for Spider-Man in general. And seeing what a wonderfully beautiful game Spider-Man was on the PS4, I can't imagine what type of game the sequel is going to be on the PS5. And even though it's not officially confirmed that the sequel will be on the future platforms, I do think that there is a very good chance that it just might be the case. But with all that said, everyone, that's the video that I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about all the points that Brian made during his DICE interview with Ted Price, and what types of features would you like to see in Spider-Man PS4 sequel going forward? Like I said earlier, I definitely like the game's combat already, but I do think Insomniac and Marvel could add even more traversal animations and mechanics within the sequel. And as for an awesome update to Insomniac's attendance at the DICE Summit, it was recently confirmed that they did just win an award at the DICE Awards for an outstanding achievement in animation for Spider-Man PS4. And even though it's not Game of the Year, it's still awesome to see Insomniac receive an award for Spider-Man PS4 regardless of what it is. So huge congrats to Insomniac, Marvel, and Sony for such an amazing achievement. But with all that said, true believers, thank you all so much for watching. Stay spectacular, Spidey fans. Happy Valentine's Day, and finally, peace out. Do you trust me? You know I do. Then we're good. I gotta go home and pack. I'll call you tomorrow when I get there. I love you. I love you too. <sighs> I miss her already.